You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. You all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. And guess what? It is a wacka, 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 wacka doodle Wednesday here in Grammy land. And, you know, unless you live in a time warp or something, I think it's a wacka doodle Wednesday where you live too. You know, uh, except for like maybe Mary B. She's down under. And so, yeah. She's a time traveler. It's already Thursday down there. <laughs> oh, well, you are listening to me here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 10, also on the RLM Spreaker channel. And if you are listening on Spreaker and you want to give me some static, come on over to RealLibertyMedia.com. Think of a nickname. Join the chat. Give me some crap. I'll give it back. It's all cybernetic, so it won't hurt too much and hopefully won't raise too much of a stench. If it does, well, I'm sure somebody will step up and say, Cheese grams, you stink. <laughs> That's okay. I'll take a bath after I'm done. Honest and for true, I will. <laughs> okay, over here on Twitter, all kind of stuff going on over here. Hey, Tim Cook at Apple. Hi, Tim Cook at Apple. Um, yeah, San Fran Nan and Trumpel Stillskin and sharks eating seals. That's sad. I know they have to eat, but I don't have to watch, do I? Oh, man. And, hey. <laughs> Got another comment going on over here. By the way, guess what? I am I'm like overachiever mode over there on Twitter. Um, I have 777 followers now, so that's a very universal numerical kind of way cool psychic kind of number thing. I think I don't know. It's triple sevens, isn't that like winner winner chicken dinner? <laughs> One of them things. But uh, yeah, apparently. Um, Oh, criminy Christmas, and now I'm brain farting here. There there was some shadow banning going on. Apparently, there's shadow banning is real, apparently. And so, I'm starting a, a game of shadow tag over on Twitter. So, if you want to play, just come on over and, and find the post where um, I did the old shadow ban thingy. And, yeah. Let's play. Let's play. Let's remind them that we think you guys are just butt munches. So we're going to laugh at you. Um, okay. Cool. Uh, a meme here. Freedom of thought will not only save you, but will save the world. The days of fake news, um, control of the narrative, and brainwashing are over. Huh. Thank you, Q. That is a cool meme. Okay, uh, over here on Minds. Wow, lots of people posting stuff all over the place on Minds. Hey there, Minds. How are you doing? Hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous day. That's some interesting memes going on here. Um, hi, American Pie. Uh, over here on Fakey Book. Uh, the Road Less Travel just shared something in the uh, Real Liberty Media page over here about... Um, Good old San Fran Nan. Apparently, Capitol Hill and Silicon Valley have locked their sights on the next targets of a frightening free speech squelching purge. Independent citizens who dare to raise questions online about the safety and efficacy of vaccines. You know, I would really much rather, you know, the little ones develop a natural immune system but the only way they're going to be able to do that is if you feed them like natural food <laughs> you know not this garbage that passes for really healthy look it's no fat no sugar no yeah what do they put in in replacement of those things in order to give it some kind of flavor be very afraid people start growing your own food that's all I got to say Okay, over here on realliberty.org. Thank you, Grimner, for letting everybody know that I am live and in person. I truly do appreciate it, hon. And um, mental, honey, I didn't know I only went for 250 
dang, I'm cheap. <laughs> okay, I ain't cheap and I ain't easy, but I can be tricked. How's that sound? <laughs> Over here on Freedoms Network. Thank you once again, Grimmy, for letting everybody know over here that I am live. <laughs> it looks like it's just me and Grim hanging out here. Although, we do have some new members. There's Jack. And, hi, there's Estrella. She's posting stuff like crazy again. Estrella's always, she is one of those that you really need to pay attention, peep. You need to, because she posts some really interesting stuff. So... Uh, oh, and Chris of the Family Masters is also over here as well as Bob Renner. Hey, Bob, how you doing, hon? Let's see. Okay. Uh, da -da. I didn't look to see who else was on over here on the realliberty.org. Bobby Bain is here. Hey, Bobby, as well as Rob Works and Vinny and Grimner, of course. Grim. He's just the grim. That's all there is to it. Don't mess with him. He'll grim you. He'll do the grim finger on you. You'd be in trouble. Okay. Um. Dun dun. Check that real fast. Dun dun dun. Okay. It wasn't real fast, but. <clears throat> Hey, did you know that clinical studies we have proven that two hours of nature sounds, a, um, uh, two hours of nature sounds a day significantly reduce stress hormones up to eight hundred percent. How do you reduce something more than a hundred percent? I always wondered that. How do you? I mean, it's either all gone, or it's not. Oh well. And apparently it activates 500 to 600 DNA segments known to be responsible for healing and repairing the body. That's from Dr. Joe Dispenza. Well, thank you, Dr. Joe. Cool. Nature sounds. I get to hear those all the time. You know what people don't realize is when you're walking around with your honey or, or just walking around and all of a sudden you hear someone belch, that is a nature sound. Because humans may have forgotten this, but we are part of nature. You know, we're part of this whole ecosystem. We just need to quit being the <clears throat> trashy ones in the crowd, don't you know? Okay, over here on reallibertymedia.com in that chat, let's see who's playing around in there. Because that's where you need to be if you're going to give me some static. Ooh, Sock Puppet just fired up the hot tub. Booyah! And Rob works as bubbling. <laughs> yeah, you know, if you hear noises coming from the other end as well, that's nature sounds. I don't know that I want to hear two hours worth of those kind of nature sounds, but they're still nature sounds. Okay, over here on the RLM, right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Cowboy Tech, who's always hearing p uh, pleasant voices. Don't ever get your hearing changed, hun, or checked. Seriously. I also see Grimner, the RLM god, is here, as well as the lovely Moose Goyle up there in Wisconsin where it's just freaking frozen. Freaking frozen up there. Where's this dang spring? I think spring sprung a leak and, and it's not here that it's leaking. The lovely Kate is also here. Hey, Kate. How you doing, sweetie? And looky there. Backward Bracket DC is here. Hi, Don. As well as Asmo and the lovely Beth Z has showed back up in the RLM chat. Yay, Beth Z. Good to see you back, hon. I also see Chalcedony is here as well as yours truly. I be Don C is here. And looky there, Meister Brow. Honey, if I knew of somebody that was selling property, I'd get a hold of you. But I don't know anybody selling property where you're at. Ponder Gander is also here, as well as the lovely Rain, and Rob Works, who just fired up that bubbler. Tiny bubbles with my wine. Yeah, I wine. Uh, Romes is here, as well as Vanna White. <laughs> the fluke of the RLM channel. They, I kept calling fluky Vanna White, and so bless their hearts, the guys changed it. So now her name is Vanna White instead of fluke. It's a fluky kind of thing. I also see Vinny is here. Hey, Vinny, you, are you uh, double personality in here? Ponder Gander and Vinny. Um, Phantom is also here once again, darling. Thank you for the intro that you did for me. I truly do appreciate it. As well as, looky there, Anti is here. And Beetle! Hey, Beetle. How's Peppy? 
Cycles is here. I'll bet Cycles is logged in, but Cycles ain't here because Cycles is way over in Denmark. Cyborg Noodle. Cyborg Noodle told a funny joke earlier today, but I thought it was just utterly silly. If you didn't see the joke, you won't get that. Dakota. Hi, Dakota. How you doing? You're another one way up there in the cold, frozen, frigid North country, as well as Frumpy, too. And Gary L. Hi, Gary L. How are things with you, hon? Um, I'm so glad to see you're in here. Long time no see, sweetheart. I hope things are going very well with Suspect Sky. And you're enjoying your other retirement. And say hey to Gigi's boo. Give her a hug for me. I also see Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is here. As well as JJ's. Hey, JJ's, you silly Scottish feller. Are you keeping the kilt down? Don't let the breeze get to the jewels. Don't do it. And looky there. Kozu is in the house as well as Kiss. Mm, and it's not Ace Freely or Gene Simmons or any of them their people. It's it's someone that's actually worth listening to. Oh, never mind. Actually, you know, when I was younger I had some Kiss albums. So I know way back when they still had albums. Oh, Pippi's listening? How cool, Beetle. I'll try not to drop any F-bombs. <laughs> Although you never know. They they sometimes happen. Just because I'm a spiritual person does not mean that I don't drop F-bombs from time to time. I also see Ninson Dubois is here. Hey, Ninson, how you doing, hon? And Pompo Pompo Pon Sauce is here as well as Sock Puppet. He's sitting in the hot tub. Honey, are you making your own bubbles? Just curious. Oh, there goes my fun. I'll check it later. Um, tech man. Tech man. You know, there's times when I need a tech man, but then I go, mm, I know enough to be dangerous. Let's see. I'll push this button. <laughs> That's not necessarily a good thing when I do that. Just saying. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Uno. And there have been a couple of rousing games that I've been able to witness here in the RLM chat. And, uh, yeah, I would not, no, no. I tend to lose at Uno, usually against my grandkids. Cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. <gasps> Kitty! Oh, okay, move along, Grams, move along. Okay, since it is a wacka 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 doodle Wednesday, I have seen a couple of things just of late. I've I've actually been doing a lot of listening to Michael Tassarian. And uh really he has some he's a he's a sharp feller. He really is. And uh, he's got some interesting perspectives on things. And after listening to him and listening to some of the the nonsense that's been going on for eons, quite literally. Um, that's kind of sort of why I, I chose the song that I chose to, to kick things off earlier. But um, then I kind of started doing some perusing on the interwebs. You know, because there's all kind of information out there. And uh, Gary L. shared this really cool thing um, about, about vaccine skeptics under siege that was uh, by Michelle Malkin. And then when I was perusing on Twitter, I also ran across one from uh, the vaccinereaction.org. And I thought, ooh, which one do I want to go with? Because I don't want to be totally down, Debbie Downer tonight. But, wow, you know, what what you put into your body, what you put into your body is not necessarily a good thing. And that leads me to this one. Thank you, Cowboy Tech, for posting this in the chat. I love this meme. What business is it of yours? What I do, read, buy, see, say, think, or who I fuck, or what I take into my body? As long as I do not harm another human being on this planet. That's from Bill Hicks. There's the F-bomb. There might be another one. I don't know. Depends on how PO'd I get at these vaccine articles. And how many I can get through. But I do want to get to something else really cool. Because it is a wackadoodle Wednesday and wacky weed and all that other fun stuff. But first, let's get into this whacked mess. Because, yeah, seriously, if you stop and think of all of the other stuff that's in vaccines, do you really want to inject that crap into your child or into yourself? And out here, the flu's making the rounds again. And, you know, every person that I've talked to that's had the flu got the flu shot. 
every single one of them. So, over 4 billion paid for vaccine injuries and deaths. This was published January the 9th of this year. So, on December 1st of, of 2018, update by the U.S. Health Resources and Services Administration, or HRSA, on the Federal Vaccine Injury Compensation Program, or VICP, it reported that the total amount of awards to children and adults who have been injured or died after receiving federally recommended childhood vaccines has surpassed 4 billion with a B. Now, stop and think about this, people, because it takes forever to jump through all of the hoops to even get to where the vaccine injury compensation program will even look at your evidence. So they, they cull the herd quite nicely. And we're paying for this, by the way. You know, all of that little stipend that they take out before you get your paycheck? <laughs> yeah, that's we're paying for other people to... <clears throat> Moving along. VICP was created by Congress under the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act of 1986 as a federal compensation system alternative to vaccine injury lawsuits filed in civil court. Read that as, now the taxpayer is on the hook because, well, we couldn't make Big Pharma pay for their own poisons, could we? Now, according to an article published in Fair Warning, almost no media attention has been given to payouts made to vaccine victims by the government. And it's not the government. Okay, the government's putting the money out there, but they're taking it from us. So, and these are adjudicated in U.S. Court of Federal Claims, also known as Vaccine Court. Fair Warning points out that one of the reasons that the Vaccine Court works in relative obscurity is because public health officials maintain that vaccines provide vast public health benefits. And the provider that gave you those vaccines also has to sign off on that paperwork to submit to the vaccine court. Do you think they want to admit that they poisoned your child? I don't think so. Now, <clears throat> these people are reluctant to talk about vaccine casualties for fear that publicity about vaccine injury compensation awards would dissuade the public from getting vaccinated. <laughs> you bet your sweet bippy it worked for me. Now, the HRSA report reveals that over, over the past 30 years, or since 1989, the VICP has received 20,123 petitions claiming vaccine injury and death, out of which 18,000 claims have been resolved. That's just the ones that made it through the hoops and then the ones that they decided, oh, okay, well, we'll go ahead and... Now, of those 17,576 cases... Um, 6,313 cases, or about two out of three claims, have received compensation awards via settlements or judgments. Okay. Wait a minute here. Okay, so of the 17,576 cases, basically, that have been resolved, 6,313 cases actually received some kind of compensation. Four billion, or over four billion has been paid out, and it's just that little bit. Now, you think how many children in this country have been vaccinated. Now, you think of how many people slash children have had adverse effects. And then you look at that number again, and you realize it's trying to get a camel through the eye of a needle. Yeah. Apparently, um, nevertheless, the... NRSA does not acknowledge that vaccine injuries are rare and estimates that one person has been compensated for every million doses distributed in the United States. Okay, one person out of every million doses. Now stop and think of how many doses children get before they can start school. Yeah, they're in on it too. However, HRSA fails to acknowledge that there is no mechanism for measuring how many injuries and deaths after vaccination have occurred but have never been reported because the doctor <laughs> doesn't want their name on that piece of paper saying that, yeah, I injected them with that. 
<laughs> it's called a CYA moment. Now, according to Christina uh, Campolillo, ah, Christina, honey, that last name, mm, it looks like you got a Scrabble thing going. And hi, Christina, I'm not going to try and jump through the hoop of your last name again. Apparently, she's the president of Vaccine Injury Petitioners Bar Association, which is lawyers that file cases for the VICP. And the vast majority of people that are coming to my office because they suffered an injury are people who did not even know these types of injuries were a possibility. Now, the issue at hand is that the number of petitions to the VICP has drastically increased over the last few years. Approximately one billion with a B dollars, or a quarter of the total amount paid out since 1989, has been given out to vaccine injured victims in just the last four years. But vaccines don't cause autism. No, actually, if you want to nitpick here, the vaccine itself probably doesn't. But all those lovely little adjuvants that are in there, those probably do, because every damn one of them are neurotoxins. Yay! Inject that right into your child's bloodstream. <sighs> For their own good, by the way. Now, while some insist that the VICP has safeguarded the public health by protecting the vaccine supply and keeping vaccine injury lawsuits out of the courts, a.k.a. keeping Big Pharma rolling in the dough, and while protecting the public perception that vaccines are safe, consumer advocates have a different view. Fair warning quotes Barbara Lowe Fisher, who is a co-founder and president of the National Vaccine Information Center, and she says, We're bitterly disappointed. In my view, this has been turned into stockholders' dream and consumers' worst nightmare. She noted that two-thirds of petitioners to the VICP are turned away, which devastate or deviates from the original purpose of the VICP, to presume causation unless there is another biological plausible explanation for the injury or death following vaccination. Now, in 2014, the Government Accountability, Accountability Office was critical of the VICP, pointing out that most claims took multiple years, some more than a decade, to be resolved. In other words, it's a waiting game. If we can outweigh you, maybe you'll die from that injury and, and then your parents will be too, big, too grieved to go forward or they'll be too broke paying lawyers to fight us because we've got unlimited supplies of money. We just take it from the taxpayers and if that ain't enough, we'll print more. That's the attitude that anybody in government's got. Mm. I needed a sip of coffee real fast. So, yeah, and there's all kinds of references involved here. And, yeah, but, 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 you guys are causing, you're, you're putting my child's health in danger if you don't do vaccines. Well, sweetheart, if you've been vaccinated, why are you afraid of someone that has not been vaccinated? Because once you've been vaccinated, doesn't that mean that you're not going to? contract whatever this person has not been vaccinated for i mean those vaccines if they really do work you shouldn't can you shouldn't catch whatever it is they've got and yet let me remind you every person i've talked to out here in my little booneyville that has had the flu in the last month got the flu shot so it's like Okay, I'm going to pay you to make me sick. <laughs> wow, a messed up world. And that's from your health care providers. Don't you feel special? I know I don't. Now, um, seeing as how that one went a bit longer than I was planning on, I'm just going to go ahead and come on back over to my pocket and give you a little bit of good news. Okay, because we got the vaccine stuff and basically the thing you got to do with that is you got to start feeding your body properly. 
Okay, try and grow as much of your own food as possible. Try and use good, clean water. And the Health Ranger has a video out there where he tests all kind of water filtration systems. Go check it out. Um, I'll see if I can't find that link and maybe post it in the chat later on. If I remember, <laughs> I'll try and find it. But um, he does go through quite a few of them, and they, you know, they, um, he's testing for glyphosate, which glyphosate is a big, bad juju thing in our water, and it's everywhere. Um, but yeah, try and grow as much as you can. Try not to buy as much pre packaged pre-made stuff and if you really do need to buy that stuff for god's sake read the label if you can't pronounce an ingredient put it back on the shelf that's the way that's my rule of thumb if i can't pronounce all the ingredients in there it goes back on the shelf even if i just have fun and start pronouncing it all kind of weird because i have tendency to do that too you know in any case Take care of your own self. Start being responsible for your own health. Stop relying on your health care provider for um, your health. Because it is, after all, your body, not theirs. And they get paid to give you stuff from Big Pharma. So, now on to something just a little more pleasant. A little more pleasant. Um, this is from environmentalleader.com. Levi's new hemp clothing uses less water to grow and feels just like cotton. Booyah! So now your Levi's can be made from hemp. Apparently Levi Strauss & Co. has created a new line of clothing made with hemp that feels just like cotton. Now, hemp requires far less water and land in the growing phase and has roughly half the carbon footprint of conventionally grown cotton, but has not had wide adoption in the apparel industry because of its coarse feel. Well, you know, work it, baby, work it. Now, however, Levi has employed a process developed by fiber technology specialists that softens the hemp, giving it a look and feel that is almost indistinguishable from cotton, according to the company. Now, the new hemp garments with the Wellthread X Outer Known Spring Summer Collection include jeans and trucker jackets, and they're made of a 70-30 cotton to hemp blend. And that hemp sourced from rain-fed hemp crop reduced the water used to, in fiber cultivation by roughly 30%. Now, Sustainable Clothing Company, or Outer Known, um, developed the treatment for hemp used in the Wealth Red Collection. And Levi says more garments will use the material in the coming days. Be sure to have deeper pockets for this by the way, because you know, anytime something new and improved comes out, it's going to be pricier. Now, the new collection also includes single fiber nylon board shorts in which all materials, the fabric, the eyelets, the core, the stitching are made from nylon and are thus fully recyclable. Yay. Yeah. And achieving the closed loop recyclability that has long eluded apparel companies, according to Levi's. Now, the Levi's Wellthread Collection, launched in 2015, is created with a waterless dyeing technology, which uses up to 70% less water compared to conventional indigo dyeing. And the Wellthread X Outer Known Collection, which was launched last fall, um, the line includes shirts, jeans, and jackets that use as much recycling as possible. That's according to both companies. The quilted uh, trucker jacket, for example, has a multicolored interior lining made from mechanically recycled cotton, and the denim exterior is woven with Tencel, Tencel X Refibra, which is a fiber produced with wood, uh, wood sourced from responsibly managed forests and chemically recycled cotton scraps. Wow. Well, you know, waste not, want not, may as well use it all. Now, Outer Known is a comp uh, clothing company marketing surfwear made from eco-friendly raw materials, and it launched in 2015 around the philosophy of doing things the right way with its tagline of 
people and planet and the company focuses on creating clothing made sustainably and acknowledges the fact that such clothing necessarily comes at a higher cost. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> we're building a very profitable business off customers that not only will pay more for preferred fibers, but will only wear things that use preferred fibers. That's according to Mark Walker, who's the company's CEO. Now, the apparel industry is increasingly being scrutinized for its sustainability, or lack thereof, from raw materials use through manufacturing all the way to retail. And practices that might have been overlooked in the past, you know, using polluting chemicals, trashing garments, they, um, they've been making headlines and prompting brands to make changes. Companies that seem to be taking sustainability to heart with environmentally responsible initiatives include CNA, The North Face, Timberland, and Vans. So, if you wish to be in on the eco-friendly clothes, and from what I understand, cotton is, there's an awful lot of genetically modified cotton out there that does not trip my trigger not in the least bit but hey it's kind of cool that they're doing this you know with the hemp clothing and I've been researching out here about um, uh, like hemp crete and um, hemp blow-in insulation you know stuff like that for for houses and and thinking wow there are just all kinds of uses for hemp and wouldn't it be amazing and now that Kansas it's legal to grow hemp although you have to go through hoops and whistles why should you have to go and ask permission to grow a plant I never forgive figure that shit out but in any case I needed another sip so, there you go. We have vaccines that are bad juju, and we got some companies stepping up and saying that they're doing the right thing, and it's a little bit too soon to tell, but hey, it would be way cool, way cool if they really do. You know, and if this works, and if you don't have to pay an arm and a leg, because if you have to pay an arm and a leg, your shirt only needs one arm, and your jeans only need one leg. Okay, um... One more real quick one, just to kind of, and then I'm going to go and check out this date in history. This is from February 25th of this year. Memphis lawmakers went to charge officers with a felony for turning off body cameras. Booyah! There you go. Memphis police are required to turn their body cameras on during encounters with the public. But that doesn't always happen. So now lawmakers are trying to hold the officers accountable by turning the tables and charging them with a felony. Officers have been caught hiding things recently, most notably in the um, Mertavius Banks case where the department says three officers turned off their body cameras before shooting a man. Oh... Now, WREG is now learning the full story of what Memphis police say happened on the night of September 17, 2018, when officers shot Banks, leaving him in critical condition. Police say that three officers deliberately hid their actions from supervisors by communicating on radio frequency that dispatch couldn't hear and turning off their body cameras before the shooting. The officer who pulled the trigger resigned. Three others got suspended. Arthur Horn represents the family of Banks, and we just think the behavior is egregious, and these officers receive a slap on the wrist, which, yeah, excuse me, you killed someone, and actually, if you turned off your cameras and were being secretive, then you knew you were doing something wrong and there was collusion slash conspiracy going on and you get a slap on the wrist something ain't right here now represent representative G.A. Hardaway a Democrat from Memphis says experiences like this or like theirs made him want to do more so what we want to do is take the issue of tampering with evidence obstructing justice and putting some specific language in the Tennessee code Hardaway's proposal meant officers would face felony charges for 
um, initial or yeah, intentionally disabling a body camera, thus obstructing justice. But resemp representatives from the Memphis Police Association say the officers involved in the bank's shooting have already been punished appropriately. Really? Someone died. Wow, do you guys have the same mentality as old Shitler he does? We came, he died. <laughs> Biatch. Now, body camera policy violations should be exactly that. A policy violation, not a criminal law violation, according to Matt Cunningham with the Memphis Police Association. We feel it's not only excessive, but it adds to stress that they have to deal with dangers. You know, have you ever stopped to think that maybe if you guys didn't act like shitheads, you wouldn't have to deal with so much shit? You ever think about that? And, um, yeah, if you are hiding evidence, anybody else that's not wearing that special, special little costume with the shiny badge thing, you know, that magic emblem, anyone else hiding evidence would be charged with a crime. Why should you be any different? He called the timing suspect and didn't think legislators should react to what he sees as a few bad apples in the department. No, honey, I think... Mm, we'll just move along. But when Mayor Jim Strickland spoke about the incident last year, he said that there were dozens of cases of officers doing the same thing, turning off their body cameras when they should be rolling. Hardaway says he thinks committees should be ready to vote on the bill in the next two weeks, and it could then go to the full Tennessee House. Meanwhile, the Memphis Police Association says that if this becomes laws, cops are going to are threatening to quit. Well, you know, if the bad apples that are turning off their cameras quit, how is that a bad thing? Please explain that to me. I'm thinking that's not necessarily a bad thing. Oh, oh yes, Rob, thank you. I just now saw that. The warlords require their tribute. <sighs> In other words, the slave masters want their cut, is basically what it is. So, go ahead and put this over in the RLM real quick. And then, I'm going to go check out the pig, P-I-Gazette.com. Because, I want to see what happened this date in history. Don't you? I suppose I could look it up on my own, but it's so much more fun to come over here to the pig and say Hambo, say hey to Hambo and Porcus, those two crazy guys, and they still got oh crazy oh here for the pick of the day. Seriously, guys, every time I see that creature, she just, I mean, it, the first time I saw her, I thought, uh -huh, she's kind of sort of bronxy girl next door, kind of sort of cute. But the more I see her and the more I hear her, the more ignorant and ugly she gets to my perspective. And stop showing that picture, okay? Because, damn, hurts my head. My IQ drops every time I hit, read something that she said. She's like a brain worm. Now, word of the day is dead. It's a condition which ensues after life ends. It does have two perks. Voting in Chicago elections and rendering a verdict on the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. In the quotable quotes section, Sharon Davies, MBE, is a former competitive swimmer for Great Britain who won the silver medal in the individual medley at the uh, 1980 Olympics. In a March 1st tweet, Davies said, I have nothing against anyone who wishes to be transgender. However, I believe there is a fundamental difference between the binary sex you are born with and the gender you may identify as. To protect women's sports, those with a male sex advantage should not be able to compete in women's sport. I agree with you, Sharon, and that's why I say they should just, if they really, if transgender people really want to compete in the Olympics, have a transgender Olympics. There call it good. They can whine to their heart's content if somebody, well, he used to be a guy and, or she used to be a guy and, and I used, that's just not very fair. 
My hormone therapy doesn't bulk me up like me, 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 me. You do your transgender shit and leave the rest of us alone. Okay, in the tasty tidbits section, this is a farmer's logic. This should be fun. Now, you know, there are so many TV channels, and each one starved for new programs. In a rural program for farmers, a female TV reporter seeking a man, uh, the main cause of mad cow disease arranged for an interview with a farmer who might have some theories on the matter. This true interview went as follows. Okay, from the reporter, I'm here to collect information on the possible sources of mad cow disease. Can you offer any reason for this disease? To which the farmer replies, um, okay. The farmer, he stared at the reporter and said, did you know that a bull mounts cow only once a year? Well, apparently the reporter was somewhat embarrassed and she said, well, sir, that's a new piece of information, but what's the relation between this phenomenon and mad cow disease? To which the farmer responded, well, miss, did you know that we milk a cow twice a day? To which the reporter replies, sir, you know, this really is valuable information, but uh, what about getting to the point? To which the farmer said, well, I'm getting to the point, miss. Just imagine if I was playing with your tits twice a day and only screwing you once a year, wouldn't you get mad? Apparently, the interview never aired. <laughs> yes, yes, I think that would be a reason to get just a little bit on the cranky side. Just saying. <laughs> oh, you guys over here are just too funny. Okay. This date in history, the 6th of March, 1558, or, or, with some of the stuff I've been paying attention to lately on YouTube, which I'm finding um, very little reason to argue with. Is it really 1558 or is it I-558? I'll just drop that little crumb there and let you guys do some perusing on YouTube. Yeah, history is his story and his story is written by the winners. Don't always take it as fact. But... According to the pig, this date in history, the day that we'll live in smoke Nazi asset infamy is finally here. When Francisco Fernandez introduces the evil weed smoking tobacco to eager Europeans. Francisco, shame on you. This date in history, the 6th of March, 1616. Nicholas Copernicus masterpiece, Da Revolutionibus. Yeah, that too. <laughs> De Revolutionibus. It's his seminal work, seminal, isn't it seminal fluid? Moving along. His seminal work on the heliocentric solar system, Placed a rosary true believers Catholic forbidden index. Ooh, you know, <clears throat> I got to put this out there. I'm I'm not a flat earther. I because I just I just plain can't go there. Just, but I'm also not a globalist. So you know, or a globist, or whatever you want to call it. Because, nah, nah. So I don't know the shape of the world other than messed up right now. But, you know, we can clean that up if we really put our thinking caps on. In any case, back to this date in history, the 6th of March, 1623, in Virginia, fun-despising killjoys enact the colony's first alcohol temperance law. And that's why we can't have nice things. It started way back then. This date in history, the 6th of March, 1770, colon uh, colonialists confront British troops. When the musket smoke clears, five Bostonians are dead, including Crispus Attacus, the first black individual to die for American freedom. Darn it all, Crispus. Darn it. Although that is a cool name. Is that really his name, guys? I'm going to have to get a hold of Porcus and ask him. Is that really his name? Oh, well, moving along. Lastly, this date in history, the 6th of March, 1845, egged on by some mother humper, the U.S. Congress appropriates $30,000 to ship camels to the western U.S. Really? 
I haven't seen any camels out here. And I've been around the wet. Of course, I haven't really been to Montana or Wyoming. I'm a little bit into them, but never been to Oregon or Washington or Idaho. But, you know, the rest of the places where you would think that camels would probably do quite well, where are they? Apparently, they didn't do so well. Hmm. And my mother trying to call. Okay. Well, that was this date in history over here on PIGazette.com. For those of you that are still listening, go check out some more stuff over there. Say hey to Hambo and Porcus. Tell them Grammy sent you. They'll run and hide. They really will. Um, the darky sky. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are being silly over here in the chat. Um, who's being the dictator? I have a picture of a tater that looks like a moving along. Oh, well. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this wacka 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 doodle Wednesday. Let me go see if I can find one more funny, one more little silliness. Because I do have just a few more minutes to uh, kind of play. And I don't don't really have any quickie articles. So I guess I'll go to Oopie. See if there's been any other. Hey, Jay Dredd, did you buy a lottery ticket today, hon? You really need to buy a lottery ticket. Because, um, oh, foofer. I didn't want to do that. Close that. UPI is telling me I have to do the ads. Kiss my butt. Sorry, I'm not going to Oopy because I'm not disabling my ad blocker. So there. Okay, let's see. A few more minutes. How about this one? Medicalintuitives.com. I'll just read the highlights and share it in the chat, and you guys can check it out for yourself. Wellness begins here. Here's five popular energy healing techniques to help restore your health. So, what is energy healing? Well, it takes many forms, including Reiki, guided imagery, acupuncture, acupressure, EFT, which is emotional freedom technique, sound therapy, and crystal healing, which sound therapy, that's one of those, that's a no-brainer. Although it does concern me when people are always doing the, um, <laughs> yeah, Graham, I wanted a quickie. Um, you know, all those sonograms that they're doing on those babies forming in the uterus. Stop doing that. Stop it. You don't know what you're doing with that ultrasound shit. Yeah, you're getting an image of that baby, but what are you doing to their genetic makeup? Stop it. In any case, back to this. This ever-growing list can create confusion for those who are just starting to explore the world of alternative and holistic health. Now, figuring out what is out there and which method is right for you can be daunting task especially if you're a beginner so with that said practitioners who utilize these alternative healing methods can often be found right in your own community thankfully not all practices for performed by energy healers require you to come into their offices many can work with you over the phone from the comfort of your own home and you'll receive the same benefits as working one-on-one -on -one with these holistic practitioners. Now, thought can do an awful lot of things. People think themselves into sicknesses. They really do. And so if you can think yourself into being sick, you can think yourself into being well. So, you know, and energy and vibration and frequency. And if you are listening to things at the same vibra frequency as the earth is, you know, that is very healing for the body as well. Um, but <laughs> the first one is Reiki and, um, it's a powerful and gen gentle form of energy healing and it can be used to help break up negative thought forms and limiting emotions as well as to help bring about physical health. And it also has many additional benefits including stress relief, relaxation, and the creation of feelings of peace, security, and well-being. And if you are feeling peaceful and secure, then your body will start reflecting that if you feed it the proper food. Acupuncture and acupressure are uh, both and they are from eastern ancient eastern arts and 
holistic practitioners who utilize acupuncture and acupressure believe that there are blockages with the meridians that lead to ill health and disease. And with putting, applying pressure or acupuncture needles in the proper places, you can get the flow going properly again. Restore your balance. There is also guided imagery, which is a powerful alternative technique. And um, let's see, researchers or research indicates that it has a positive impact on health and can be used to heal the body. So, um, and I have, I've watched some videos on that and thought that's really cool, but I'd want to be there and actually, because you know, you can fake all kind of stuff. So <laughs> I'd, yeah, I'm hopeful and yet, and yet still a little on the, uh, skeptical side. Crystal healing, which, yeah, I'm, I will say that if I've got my crystals with me and I'm, I'm needing a little bit of a boost, I don't know if it's just because I'm, it's a placebo effect or what, but I do think crystal healing helps. Crystals and other healing stones work on many levels, both physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Now, during a session, a crystal healer may place various stones or crystals on your body to support the movement of life force energy. And the location where the stones are placed may align with body chakras. So that's something, and I have had two crystal healing sessions, and wow, if you're not prepared for it, <laughs> yeah, emotional breakthroughs was what a lot of mine was. You can also have the emotional freedom technique. And uh, it simply makes a powerhouse when discussing energy healing techniques. It's easy to learn. You do not have to purchase any equipment to do it. And its effects can be experienced within minutes. Energy healing is safe, non-invasive way to take care of yourself and your loved ones. And if you have not experienced the benefits of one of these holistic techniques, then contact an experienced energy healer and schedule a session. Couldn't height. Um, this emotional freedom technique, it's sometimes referred to as tapping. And I have also done that as well. And you know, actually, if you've got a sinus headache, there's a wonderful video on YouTube about uh, tapping to relieve sinus pressure. And, and you have to do it in a certain order. But I tell you what, after 20 minutes of doing the whole tapping process, my sinus headache was gone and my sinuses drained and I went through several Kleenexes, <laughs> but it worked. It worked. So you'd be surprised. Um, don't poo poo unless you try it. That's what I say. And anytime I can do something other than take a pill that helps keep the bottom line healthy for big pharma you can bet your sweet bippy i'm gonna give it a try at least so once again thank you all for listening in on this wacka 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 doodle wednesday um tomorrow we got flasher coming on at 7 p.m eastern time with 20 percent off and then friday at 1 p.m eastern the ponder gander with Vinny. i will be back friday evening at 7 p.m eastern time with the friday edition of the rocket chair saturday the dork table at noon so yeah all kinds of fun stuff throughout the rest blah, 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 but that too the rest of the week see i i can't i'm having troubles <laughs> oh well until then take care of yourselves learn question everything don't believe what someone's telling you especially if they're charging you to give you that advice Okay, don't just off the cuff believe it. Do your own research and grow your own food as much as you can. Even if you live in the city, do a window box and grow your own herbs, if nothing else. There's all kinds of things that you can do to cut back on the nastiness that's in this prepackaged world. And please remember, I honestly and truly do love you all. And more importantly, I care about you, and I wish you all enough. Good night. <laughs>